church in Sao Paulo, uh, and I was doing my my PhD, and we got to know each other, and we did a lot of things together. Um, and I met um, Professor uh, Bosick in uh, Canada. She was a leader speech and a, a program that I, I went there uh, and meeting. And I was really impressed with her and what she did and our other university. So when me and Denise decided to do a ebook in English about uh, women's rights, we asked um, Chiquita to write with us. And since then, we have an um, uh, international friendship and a, uh, and a partnership to try to create a network uh, of women and professors. So that's kind of our thing. Uh, here, and my group is a mixed group. We have um, master students, Nilo, our master students, who's helping us a lot here. Uh, we have uh, undergraduated, the girls, and we have graduates, no, her and him, they're from uh, the undergraduate program here, law undergraduate program. We have graduate students here. We have here in Brazil what we call um, something in the middle between um, undergraduate and master program. It's kind of like a graduated program. And so that's, we have all kind of uh, students here doing different things. So that's, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> I see here that Paulette is logging in from Georgia College. So um, everybody, so that you understand, uh, this partnership was between Shepherd University, Georgia College, and two universities in Brazil. And we did, uh, we had all of the campuses watch the movie Gender Revolution, and each class had a unique background in exploring gender identities for a particular reason. So Dr. Cross, her students are doing memoirs. Um, they have a, a self-exploration that they're doing, and each student is writing a book about their self. And so in exploring themselves, they watched the documentary so that they could then understand their gender identity and how they see other identities and then write a section of their book. But guess what? Her class of freshmen, so, so, so that we understand what's happening here, we are talking about gender identity with freshman students, with juniors and seniors and undergrad in, a, in different states in the United States. And then we're working with an international partnership. Hi, Paulette. Can you hear us? I see she's there. She'll, she'll join in a second. But, um, just so that everybody understands the dynamics here and, and really what's going on. This is a huge movement to, to incite social justice. So my name is, is Quita uh, Howard Bostic, and um, I've been teaching at Shepherd University for, um, for seven years now. And throughout that time, I have tried to change the culture on this campus. And so some people who if, if you, you are now in your senior year here, you wouldn't understand that Shepherd's campus is a lot different in 2019 than it was seven years ago. So there's a huge emphasis on service projects and on social justice initiatives and on support and helping the community. And this university was not like that before I got here. So I've been working with the Title IX office. I've been working with a lot of other faculty members. Um, Dr. Seeger, who was the um, Vice President of Student Affairs, working with them in Multicultural Student Affairs to awaken a type of awareness about social justice issues in our area and also around the world. And so this is my first time connecting um, using a coil um, working directly with students from international popular with an international background however i have traveled to many different countries to 
discuss uh, social justice movements dealing with human trafficking, dealing with um, gender identities, dealing with race and social justice. And just last year, I was invited to Georgia College's campus by Dr. Cross to talk to their students and their Africana Studies program about the value and importance of social movements and respecting people across diverse backgrounds. So one of the huge initiatives that I have on campus is to get people to see and understand the value of difference. And so for me, that's what this is about. This is about understanding that everybody is not the same and because you're different, it doesn't mean that something is wrong with you or that you're a bad person or that we should not interact or engage you. And so that is the reason why I'm now focusing on this particular topic. This particular topic is very unfamiliar to me. It's very unfamiliar to me because I'm a heterosexual <coughs> woman. Um, and so I do not identify as transgender. And so I have many students who do and their identities and their value on campus is very important to me. And so I want other people to see the value and understand the history of different identities so that these people can be respected and so that they can have a place where they are accepted on our campus. And I use the word they as an expression to talk about this particular group and not the they as a pronoun identifier. Does everybody understand? So I want to be clear in the use of terms to make sure that everybody understands the respect that I'm trying to present when I talk about, you know, people who have an important and valuable place as I do. And so, you know, and so this is the reason why I'm here. So I'm at Shepherd University in West Virginia, and I have here with me students who are enrolled in a class called Social Stratification. It is a sociology course. However, the students in this course have backgrounds in political science, sociology, social work, um, and communications, and criminal justice. So um, their backgrounds vary in the social sciences, and they are here to understand different forms of injustice. And, um, and so this is the perspective that these students are prepared to provide. Thank you. Thank you, Shikita. Well, it's my turn, all right? Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Denise. I'm a professor at UniCristus. I've been here for eight years, and I moved to Sao Paulo. I lived there for six years, and now I'm back, August 2019. This is my students from master class, Ivone. Lívia, Roberto, Marina, and Camila. We are all together in a, the master class named um, Law, Learning, and Methodology. We discuss how can we manage technology, new knowledges uh, into uh, law degree, undergraduate and master class. Unicristus, we are in Fortaleza. Fortaleza is, a cap is the capital of Ceará. We are in the north northeastern Brazil. We have in Ceará almost 7 million people. And in Fortaleza, that is the capital, we have 2.5 million people. Here we have some problems with social justice because we have um, a great, how can I say, a great economy comparing uh, other states in Brazil because we are small, but we have many problems with, with how can I say, distribution. It, uh, yes. So here we have in Ceará, talking about Human Development Index, HDI. We are 0.68 in 2010, but we are thinking we are proving with some difficulties, but we are proving. Hi, Paulette. 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 Hi, Paulette.
can I hear? I guess I can. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, keep going. Okay. So, Fortaleza is the fifth largest city in Brazil with 2.6 million people. Uh, we are the administrative, economic, and cultural center of the state of Ceará. And we have some social and economic indicators about education, health, income distribution improved between 2000 and 2015. We don't have these numbers uh, recently, but I think we can know about a little bit about us with these numbers. So we are very excited to be with you to discuss social justice, to discuss uh, transgender issues, to discuss gender inequalities. So we were very, very excited during the, uh, when we saw the documentary, Gender Revolution. So thank you, Chiquita, for, for this opportunity and to, to show us the documentary. I didn't know the documentary and our group was very, very um, instigated by the question uh, we can see and we, we could see in the, the documentary. So I'm happy, we are happy to be with you and with Monica and Paulette. We think this call will be very interesting for our universities and for our uh, knowledge about law. We are a master class of law. Our master is in process and right development. So we discussed many things about development in Brazil and abroad. So thank you very much. And we hope we could, we can uh, improve our, our, our discussion and conversation and our text including. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Paulette, um, yes. I, I, I told everybody a little bit about your, about your class and about the memoir. And when I, when I introduced um, the, the, the dynamics of, of the project and, and all the partners that we had, but can you, um, can you introduce yourself and tell them you know, more about your students and about um, the African Studies program and, and how and how everything that you're doing connects with um, with the with the project. You know why you're why you're here. Can you introduce yourself? I, I'm Paulette Cross and I'm faculty uh, at College of Education in Milledgeville, Georgia. So I'm in a very rural section, about two hours from Atlanta, Georgia, and so this. This um, semester, we I've designed a writing life stories class, uh, which entails, um, you know, writing, putting your family stories together. It's actually kind of a way to uh, um, get at the production of knowledge within your family. Uh, uh, you know, and that makes us feel, you know, by yeah. this research, the students are do doing part of genealogy, um, interviewing their parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends. Um, so therefore, in relating that to um, what we're doing here, that gender piece is, is a big piece that we all can relate to. You know, what, what happens if you're interviewing someone that may be a little bit different? How do you, how do you write about that? How do you, how do you um, um, bring out the, the, their stories in a way that's um, uh, not only um, respectful, right, of who they are, but how do we bring authenticity, authenticity to their voices as a, a member of your family? So that gender piece was heavy. In our class, the day that we had conversations about it, it was, it was, um, it was um, good and challenging because sometimes when we have these discussions, they may not line up with or align with how we were socialized in terms of religion. I'm in the Bible Belt here in the United States, so 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 religion is a very very big piece of one's socialization. So we had a very vibrant, lively discussion, and what I liked about it is that many of the students, I I I, I was the I was the facilitator. Many of the students answered and um, challenged other students when it came to some answers 
about traditional ways of thinking about people, particularly gender. So I don't know if that um, answers Dr. Howard, your question, but um, that's how we in incorporated uh, this topic, this theme in our life writing stories class. So, um, so once um, Dr. Cross introduced her idea of having a course that was about storytelling, I went to our communications department and um, we have a class sociology class for next semester um, uh, about uh, genealogy. So um, so now our students are going to take the Ancestry.com uh, genealogy test and do something very similar, uh, but they're going to do a cultural history of um, their different ethnicities and, and their bloodline and tell a story using multimedia tools. Um, so it's a cross list with communication. So so that everybody understands what happens here is you, I, I go to a conference, I provide a presentation about the red flag campaign, which is about um, safety, right? No sexual violence on campus. And then I meet two amazing faculty members from Brazil. And then I go to a conference in North Carolina and I meet this amazing faculty member, Dr. Cross from Georgia College who then um, invites me to speak on her campus, who comes up with a class, and then Shepherd University then has a class designed based upon her class. So what's happening here, if you all understand, is that the use of technology and the use of connections and social networks and relationships, those are used to create social justice in so many different ways. So we want you all to see how these tools can be used. So, you know, it's about the technology, it's about the tools, it's about the relationship, and it's about the subject matter. So take these types of technology and these type, this example of relationship building and use this as you all venture out and explore your career fields and make connections and create change around the world because this is what we're trying to do. So you all are a part of an amazing connection and relationships that have created change for now, I would say, thousands of students, if you all understand what that means. So it means that these networks and the relationships that happen between all of these projects, now Paulette and I have been to Hawaii presenting at a conference, as well as North Carolina, and now we're here with you, and I'm gonna be in DC with two students here, stand up, who are gonna present at an international conference where we talk about this and we talk about other things that relate as well. So think about these relationships and think about what this means. I hope this is valuable to everybody as we start to talk and I hope you all can feel the power when you're communicating of being a part of something so great. So, um, so what I want us to do now is to start off with just some general comments and I think um, what we did with um, at Georgia College was a general wordle and so my students have an understanding of what a word conversation is. And what that means is that you come up with a word that describes your experience when you watch the documentary. And so it is okay to identify this word in your actual language that you speak and then someone can translate for you or you can do it in English, but I think in order to get our conversation going, we want to start with our passion and our feelings because this is where we are right now. I feel very passionate about this. So um, my students are familiar with the flipped classroom and words that help you know describe a situation or something that you've learned. So the first uh, question that we have is here um, about the meaning of sexuality and gender identity. And that's what this is all about, us understanding the meaning. So if we can all take just one minute and think about just one word that describes something that you learned or how you feel about the documentary or your experience thus far, if you can come up with that word and maybe write it down for yourself, then we'll just have everybody get used to saying something. That'll be our exercise of getting used to talking. Um, just coming up with different words. And there doesn't have to be an order by which we do this. 
So this is how we'll get a feel of our four-way classroom, okay? So take a minute and think about a word, and then we'll start. <clears throat> Is everybody ready? Yes? Are you sure? I can, I can, are you ready? Farming. And, and for and for me that that means that I don't have to be like everybody traditionally. I do not have to conform. I don't have to live as traditional people would live. Non-conforming. That's my word. Go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> um, my word is courage. Courage in Portuguese. Say it again now. Um, courage. I don't know. But um, you need to be very courage to tell the world that you're not what they think you should be. Yeah. That's what something that uh, really um, make me think. Um, like. Uh, Professor Howard, I'm an heterosexual woman and never uh, thought about things like that very much. And it's really interesting to see uh, the Kate story, uh, the doctor uh, Kate story. And it's really something that made me think uh, she was a white male, a doctor. With a uh, uh, middle class, with a wife and kids, everything uh, you're supposed to be to be happy. And she had the courage to change so she could be truly happy. So, this is, was something really um, interesting and something that changed the way that I see uh, the situation. So, it was very important to me. So, that's my work. Anybody want to okay. Um, my word I chose was ignorance, which is another word was uneducated. I would say for myself, I um, the world in we're living in a society where everything's changing. And it's very important to learn proper terms um, and things how we can get so we're not offending and we can um, grow with each other as we are learning new things about other people. I think it's very important. So for me, after watching the video. I was able to expand my horizon and my knowledge on the subject that I previously didn't know. So um, just like I shared uh, for like the terms that I didn't know how many terms there is for um, those who are you know, heterosexuals and you know, bisexuals, there's just a lot of different terms that we need to be educated on um, in our changing society. So, that's what I use. so we're talking about um, the different vocabulary words. Um, I handed out a list of um, before we before our campus watched Gender Revolution. Um, our student affairs team had a training called Allies Training, and you know I think I think we should do that. Um, I think we should have student affairs to come on a Zoom conference with us and have our students participate in the Allies Training because it was a very short training where you learned about all current vocabulary words and terms and ways of understanding 
different gender identities. And it was also a way to help you respect people. And I, it was amazing. And so they had a handout. And right before our video, I distributed this handout. So it was kind of like, I don't know, organic for me because I had just sat in a training where I had learned from people who do this type of work all the time, uh, different vocabulary words and ways to use them in a conversation. So I passed them out. And so Kylie is talking about um, the, the vocabulary in, in addition to the video. So I think I want to get that sheet and a PDF file to everybody. So okay. can you remind me to, to get you that, that paper? Because I thought it was great. It was one page, right? And it was just one page and it was really informative. So I'll make sure I get that. Perfect. Just kind of just kind of miss Chiquita. This paper you have it's just it's just a one it's like a handout that was provided during a training and it just it it had there was a gingerbread man woman person <laughs> there was a, it was a there was a gingerbread person and then it talked about um, all these the different ways that you identify with an individual and ways to express yourself using this gingerbread person that you couldn't call a gingerbread man. Okay. okay. Gingerbread person. And it was just an inter interesting way to look at this. You know, do you all know what I mean by the gingerbread man? You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it was like a cookie. It was like a gingerbread cookie man, but you couldn't call it a man. You had to call it a person. So it was a, a, an initial step in understanding how we've been socialized to refer to, to people as a man or as a woman instead of just looking at identities in terms of human beings and respecting people outside of putting them in these um, um, distinct binary categories. So it was just interesting. Okay. All right. Does anybody, does anybody else want to, want to introduce your word? We thought about resilience because it's a tough issue so we have strong positions many times these positions are very very how can i say polarized so i think we think that resilience is a word that defines um, uh, a way that you have to deal in the first place with different especially for people who is, uh, how can I say, uh, who is living, in fact, the difference. So resilience, uh, because we have to, to face, we are facing a, a, a challenge for being more tolerant and more equal in our society. So our word can be resilience and empathy and empathy, yes. Um, I, I'd like to um, introduce my word challenging. And I, I thought as I uh, watched the film, um, the film challenges us towards um, equity. Because I mean, the basic thing in society is we want everyone to be equitable, right? So, for me, um, as you look at the different scenarios, uh, this discussion, of learning about different types of people, um, it challenges society towards a more equitable stance. Um, my word is uh, changes, and not only do is the society going through changes in order to accept and um, identify these people as who they want to be and who they are identified as, but the changes as in their their own mindset, their own society, because sometimes they are not accepted <clears throat> sorry, by their families. So they have to do a completely different lifestyle change in order to like complete the image that they want to be and the person that they want to be, even though nobody else accepts them. But there is always a group of people that will accept them who they are because they go through the same changes every day that this one person is going through as well. 
I thought that was, I, I enjoyed that. that. Is everybody, can everybody hear everybody well and everything? We couldn't hear from, we, we couldn't hear. Okay. Can you, can you say it louder so that there's a green? So you see how it needs to be yellow? You need to stop there. No, you just need to stop loud. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, why it's not. Okay, okay. Let's, let's grab the scene. So, okay, we have it now. And so now I think, can you hear her now? Say anything. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, wait, make, make it green again. And then, go ahead. If you talk, then it'll, once it's here, once it's on us, then they can hear you. Okay. okay. I'm gonna try and repeat all this. Okay. Um, my word was changes, and like I said, not only going for the changes that society has to make to accept these certain people and how they want to live their lives, their mindset and their life has to change in order to for them to complete that this person that they want to be and that they know who they are. And not only is it uh, a change for everybody else, but it's also a change in mindset for them because now they're going and living a completely different life than what they were trying to conform to before. So they have to change, you know, their outer appearance, their mindset, sometimes their own lives because they're not accepted by everyone. But no matter who they are, they are always going to be accepted by the people that they're going through as well. So, so that's, so I think, okay, so, so we, our words are really interesting um, because we're talking about courage, we're talking about difference, we're talking about resilience, we're talking about empathy, we're talking about the challenges that exist for people um, in terms of their ability to have people hear them um, and, and all the different things that happen in society with regard to living in a world where you have to be someone who's not yourself. Um, I, I don't know if I can imagine walking through the world not being able to be who I am. Like, I, I take pride in, in, um, in being Shaquita Howard Bostic and being able to be authentic um, is, is very important to me. Um, but we have people in our society who have to live in a closet and not be able to express who they are. And we want to cry, we want to try to create a space where, where people can be as authentic as humanly possible. Um, I would like us to explore uh, what we learned about um, sexuality and identity, um, especially the term gender. So can we talk a little bit about what gender means? Because I know for some of us, um, we did not know the difference between sexuality and gender. So if you learned anything about the difference between the word sexuality and gender, I would like you to talk about that. Anybody? Um, and 
this is who they are. But if we say that sexuality is who you love, then that takes away the discounting of people who are in position to have same sex relationships biologically. If sexuality is who you are in love with, then it is different from who you decide to have a sexual relationship with. So this is a very new way of exploring sexuality. Can we talk about that? How you think about that? How do you, how, how do you feel about that? What does that mean to you for the, the terminology and definition of sexuality to kind of transition from what we may have been taught in our childhood? Well, I, I think, um, Cleta, I'm going to speak for my students. Um, it's a hard, it's a, a, a difficult conversation, particularly because we're socialized um, in a particular way. So, for example, if, if you're religious, you look at sexuality in a whole different way. After seeing the film, it was a rude awakening for a lot of people. A lot of people were in, empathetic and, and quite... Um, um, torn between, well, well how, what should I believe? How should, you know, how, how, do I, how do I handle this? Because I was raised one way to think about it according to my religion, and now I'm seeing this very great and good um, um, documentary that's expressing the really human side, the real lived experience side of, of people loving the same sex, right? It was it was quite um, quite a challenge, and 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 I saw it through the conversations in in my class. There were those that believed one way and those that believed another. But the beauty of it all was one of my students in particular said, in terms of the uh, uh, the harsh um, critique about uh, this, right? Um, well, how do we know? If we have an experience, how, how could we take such, be so critical if we haven't experienced it? That student was talking about this the, 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 being equitable. If you don't know, if you're not in those person's shoes, why be negative? Why not embrace, be empathetic in a society that is, is many times homophobic, right? So I just wanted, I thought I should put that out there. I, um, I had dinner with um, two amazing women um, whom I respect so very much. And um, one of them is a school administrator. And um, she was confronted with a parent who uh, wanted to remove her, her uh, daughter from, from the school she was in kindergarten and to allow her to attend a district school that was about 20 miles away and to begin at the new school. Um, so, so her, her daughter was born uh, as a, as a, a male, male, male genitalia. So the baby uh, lives and expresses her life and self as a girl and so the parent had decided that they're going to allow their daughter to socialize and engage her life as a girl and move her from the kindergarten class at my friend's school to a new kindergarten class where she would live her life as a girl at that point on and so we sat together eating dinner, talking about whether they thought it was okay for the mother and father to allow a child so young, four years old, to decide at that early age that they would live their lives as a little girl instead of a little boy. And so it wasn't a video. Does everybody understand that? So when I when I saw it in the video, it was it was a video. It was in a video. It was a video, like like it was a video. It was just, it was just a video, and people were saying things in the video, and it was impactful in a video because the video 
made me look at things from a different perspective. But I wasn't in the shoes of a, a college, of a, of a high school administrator, of a, of a public school administrator, who then had to make the call and the decision to request the transfer and use their role in their job or their position to then encourage another administrator to say that it's okay for other children in the kindergarten class to be in a classroom with a young boy who could potentially expose his genitalia in a bathroom with a group of little girls who is only four years old. So, I mean, it's one thing to, to watch a video, but then it's another thing to be in a real life situation, even as a bystander listening, I didn't know what, my friend asked me, what should I do? And I'm here working with this group here, with all of you, with the students, teaching and educating. And, and I really didn't know what to say in terms of, you know, what, what should she do or how should she handle the situation? So it, it is challenging because we are involved in a video and there are real life experiences happening where real decisions have to be made. And so I had to tell her to watch the documentary and then to use the documentary to help her make a decision about what it is that she should do. Um, can I say something? Um, I think it's really interesting that this uh, program is between the United States and Brazil because we have a lot in common. We are very big countries. We are federation, something that's not normal. Sometimes we forget that most countries are not federations. And we have uh, realities that are really uh, different. Move your, move your microphone a little bit away from your mouth. Okay. Again? Okay. Oh, Further away. Further away. But I think 
it's really uh, wonderful that we are allowing each other to think about it. And I think it's really interesting that uh, we, we're not from gender, we're not intersex, and we are making each other think about this. So when, when we can talk with people who are living in this kind of situation, we are not going to do like the obvious things we're not supposed to do. We start here, you know, and we don't start uh, like in the beginning and saying the more cruel things because we don't know what to say. So I think this is really interesting. And I think this is really something that um, makes me passionate about this, this program and what we do. <laughs> Here we are talking about this kind of this issue uh, since the beginning uh, because we are very how can I say in doubt uh, talking about children who who is chi a child who is a transgender and to discuss what what is the age that this child as Shikita said can realize that she is or he is a transgender child. So here in Brazil, we are a country that uh, we, have as, uh, we have as reference the civil law. So we have a, a federal constitution, we, all ha we have uh, the civil code, we have the law of public records, all of these laws embrace this issue and we have to look at these the laws to discuss the theme because we are né, lawyers and we are discussing law and the limits of the law and the limits of this structure that we will have uh, that is different from us so the uh, it has been very interesting and challenging to discuss this kind, this kind of thing because having this kind of matriz, how can I say matriz? This kind of base of thinking. Eh? Uh, we, we, we don't know if in Brazil we could um, authorize a child who is four years old to make this kind of decision. So uh, we are very, 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 very uh, interesting, interested uh, in, this, in this question that you propose, Chiquita, because we don't have an answer. We are been discussing this, this question uh, for three or four meetings that we already had and we, we just don't have an answer. And we are really sure that an answer, a uh, unique answer will be very difficult, especially, especially because we have um, uh, an expression in Brazil that is prioridade absoluta, uh, uh, a higher priority uh, uh, for children. So, so that's it. In a, in, a, in, a, in a meeting um, last week, um, can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. In a, in a meeting last week, um, for, there was a committee called the Diversity and Equity Committee on Shepherd Campus. Um, there are um, two students who are part of this committee. One is a grad student and the other is a, um, an undergrad student. And they talked about our data collection process for students at Shepherd University. Um, when you all enter the university, um, they ask you to check a box um, if you are a male or a female, but there is no other box that, um, that can be checked. And then there also is no, um, continual data collection um, 
involved that would allow uh, students to identify outside of being a man or a woman. So when we were going to try to do research and figure out how we could incorporate diversity on campus or even do any type of data construction, um, there was actually no way to collect data on the student population because the administrators have not allowed for an other category to be included in, um, in looking at or exploring students or student needs. So there are other categories for races and ethnicities, but there aren't any um, for, for gender. So um, how do you begin to have the conversation and to see what portion of your population would be affected by it? It will have to start with data collection because you can't even identify a population of need because the university hasn't included that in their, um, in their uh, enrollment process. And I believe that is also the case with federal and student loans. So this conversation can't even happen in schools or in universities because you can't identify the population to communicate about. So, I mean, it's an, it's an issue that can't be addressed until the administrators attempt to allow for the group to actually exist. So in data, the group doesn't exist. All right, um, so another thing that, um, that we talked about after our documentary, um, one of the questions was about different issues facing vulnerable populations. And um, just to provide the example for our campus, uh, we have a new initiative, a, um, a, a gender neutral bathroom initiative on campus. So they're trying to take to have at least one gender neutral bathroom in every building on campus. Um, because, and, and by gender neutral, this can mean the family restrooms, you know, the restrooms that you can take anybody in, anybody can go in. And so they're looking at restrooms that have one stall in them and allowing anybody to be able to utilize that restroom. Uh, so that's a current initiative on on our campus. Um, Dr. Cross, do you have any initiatives that you know of on your campus? I don't. Um, um, uh, I, I just don't know. I, I think the thing that um, in my class we talked about was the uh, initiative or the legislation that's current now in South Carolina. That was a big topic when we discussed this and I got a good feel of, about um, you know, how we should handle it. I think the general consensus of the class was that <laughs> you have to go to the restroom. Why is it important that this gender piece, you have to go to the bathroom, you go to the bathroom. Doesn't matter what's on the door. You know, a lot of the students felt, you know, and if you don't like what's on the door, then just don't use that particular one, but to keep someone from using a restroom um, I think that was the general thrust of the way that the conversation went in my class. They are totally empathetic about, um, you know, people having to be denied. I think there was a piece in the film about uh, the, the person that was in, in, in um, before city council being ostracized in a way. So, so they, they, you know, my, my, my class had feelings about um, bathrooms are bathrooms. They're made for one special purpose, to go in and use them and come out. What does gender, why would, would gender have to be imposed? That was the general feeling in my class. It's not widely supported on our campus at all. Um, so oh. People said some things like um, your, the bathroom is a personal space. And so um, huh. they don't want to, why, why would they want their, their, their children, you know, to, to enter a bathroom and then to have to explain things to their children that they might not be ready to explain. Or if they're in their personal space, why, why do they have to engage in private, I mean, in public conversation? Well, and see, that's interesting because in my class, they talked about being at home when we use a, our bathrooms at home. 
they're not gender labeled, right? We, we, we use them, we come out, we use them, come out. So I, I yeah, interesting. So I different, yeah. So let me, Monica just sent me a message that in Brasilia, uh, it's, uh, it's raining. So they have a problem with the internet now because of the, the storm. Oh, okay. That's okay. the reason she is not with us anymore. Just to does she, um, does her, um, does her cell phone, her cell phone work? She, she can use her cell phone because, oh, they are, yes. they are back. Okay. Okay. okay, we're back. Okay, yay. Twelve twenty-five p.m. Eastern Standard. Yes, on the Thursday or yeah. Tuesday. Thursday. Yes, that is my class time. My class time is twelve twelve thirty to one forty-five. Would you? Would your students be be interested in participating in some or of the discussion? I know we all have. I'll see, and maybe I can. I'll, I'll manage. I'll see. Okay. I'll, Okay, so the so the next the next conversation that we have on our schedule is, is set for that for that time. Okay. Okay. And um and so I think um I think a good thing to do always a good thing to do is like a wrap as a as a wrap up um you know what 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 how do we feel what what did we learn any any words or whatever that that we want to share um. Especially, um, maybe some something that you learned from your class conversations or or the documentary. We could end this comp this particular conversation in that way, and then we'll come back to our next conversation and we'll talk about heterosexual uh, heterosexism and prejudice, and we'll talk a little bit about. Um, interdisciplinary understandings and like so basically how does gender identity affect the law how does it affect the education field how does it affect sociology psychology and so on and so forth we can have more of those conversations next time but um i like to start with passion and i like to end with knowledge building and um and so i can give an example to start um i i would say that most most impactful during this process for me has been um, watching some of my students change their perspectives um, and watching that encourage me to be more serious about the subject matter and about my involvement and engagement in people um, because just because I teach social justice and, and just because I stand up for the rights of people, it doesn't mean that in my personal life and all the time that I fully engage on the topic, you know, and that I'm being a, a model to follow. I don't go around trying to do things wrong intentionally, but um, I, I think serving as an example for my daughter and um, and for and for my students, I've been empowered by the people around me, and um, 
And so I'm, I'm, I just feel really grateful for the opportunity to become a better person, to be a better person um, in the process. So that's my two cents. <laughs> Um, would anybody here like to share anything? Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, hello. Uh, my name is Howard Shanley. I am undergraduate student, and I want to speak a little bit about my perspective about this um, discussion. Well, I come, come from a small city, from Goiás, one state uh, of Brazil. And uh, my city um, is very conservative. And I think, and uh, since I was a little boy, I, uh, was taught that uh, you uh, can play just with this kind of toys. Um, you uh, you can you, you must uh, have this kind of behavior. Um, you can uh, speak uh, th uh, this way. So um, I think uh, one part of this discussion is uh, it is the the freedom um, because you you can, um, we uh, the majority of us was taught uh, the world uh, is managed in a binary system so uh, the women can make some kind of things, and the uh, men can make some kind of things. So uh, for me, uh, it is uh, a, a, a little bit difficult uh, to live with, with this kind of changing because um, I was taught living like that in this. Uh, uh, in this binary world. So, in the moment, uh, this moment, uh, this world is changing, it is, uh, it is a little bit difficult to accept the, this evaluation. So, when you, uh, but I do not have a, uh, a, or the paper of prejudice. I just uh, I, I do I just was taught uh, that uh, we are uh, we live it uh, in our binary world. So um, for me, it is a little difficult to live with it. Sharing. Um, does anybody else have any closing ideas? Mm -hmm. I think um, it's a hard process for all of us, and for some students more than for others. And, and I think for me as a teacher, I don't know if um, Denise is the same, but something really um, wonderful when I see the students. Uh, trying to speak in English. Yes, for, yes. Here for us is the same thing, and we have to to thank Chiquita for this idea and for her courage, because it's a challenge for us, me and Monica, uh, to to speak in English, to write in English, to review the test. So. Uh, besides, we we are studying English since we were child. We were we were children, me and Monica. But we never lived for many years in the United States or Canada or in England. So it is a challenge uh, for us 
also and it is is very exciting and challenging to uh, influence our students to to be here to to many of my students here they are lawyers they are public servers they have to to ask for their bosses to be here to to not to lunch they they are going straight ahead to their work so it is it is we we can we are how can i say we don't have to cry but we we every time we 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 have this how can i say this emotion because there is it is difficult yes but it's also um we are grateful yes yes we are grateful for for everybody and for this opportunity so thank you very much we are here very sorry because we have to leave we have to leave now because uh, some students are waiting for the class so i'm sorry about that but we are very very happy to be with you in this project to be with you in this yeah. sharing these these themes and these issues in this our our reality so thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you. Adios. I'm 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 here. You, you all know that I'm I'm glad that, that that you're here. I'm 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 grateful for the opportunity to be able to have anybody listen to anything I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Um, you know, I grew up in a um in a in a community where um. There were lots of challenges, and for me to be able to um, to come from that space and then be here and work with you all is amazing. So, well, everybody, we will see each other next time, and um, and everybody enjoy your day. Have a really wonderful day and week, and uh, I'll follow up by getting the handout to to everyone and. Thank you, Dr. Cross, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.